When I think of Gwen Ifen, I think of someone that has many packages. Someone that can deliver multiple items at one time. And finally, someone that can use a gong that can call me back to the bedroom for sex. Ah, uh, uh, I'm sorry. I mean, someone that's very versatile, a jack of all trades, but unfortunately, a master of none. Today, we're going to be talking about Gwen Ifen and why you as a free-to-play player should be building her because she's the queen of versatility, a jack of all trades. Is that a mole under her armpit? I don't know. Tell me in the comment section down below. Is that a mole under her armpit? Armpit or just clipping. Anyways, the reason why I say she's a jack of all trades is because she can be ran in multiple different team comps and provide a level of support to each one of these different types of team comps, whether that be a doctor ratio team, whether that be a dot team, whether that just be a common support unit on the team in general. Anyways, guys, let's go ahead and hop into a kit breakdown first, and then we'll talk about a little bit of the build after that. So let's hop into Gwenifen's basic attack first, because this basic attack actually does something. Not only does it target a single enemy, it also has a chance with one of your your traces to inflict fire dot on the enemy which is just gonna be super good for skill point efficiency and everything like that now let's go ahead and talk about her skill because this is where the kit starts to get really juicy at well realistically it's a talent but it gets juicy here because you're gonna be dealing some juicy blast damage with her skill point attack yes yeah, she'll be targeting one main enemy hitting adjacent enemies obviously it's a blast attack and she'll be having a 100 base chance to burn this target as well as adjacent enemies too this is also going to inflict fire dot on the enemy of course as well so pretty good there too. Now, hopping into the ultimate, this makes her a mini Kafka. So this is going to be hitting all enemies, and on top of that, it's going to be reprocking the burn on the enemy as well. So you'll be getting some reprocked fire burn here as well. This works really good with someone like, say, Black Swan that needs to reproc dots to really keep building their stacks up. So this is a really good choice for Black Swan. Now let's hop into her final talent here, the juiciest bit of her kit, which is Fire Kiss. And the way you apply this is by basically doing burn damage to the enemy. Whenever the enemy takes burn, there's a 100% base chance to apply fire kiss and basically what fire kiss does is makes the enemy take increased damage for a set amount of turns this is an in removable buff as well so this would work really well for someone like dr ratio or even someone like black swan as well or just a dot team in general and also could work really well with someone like topaz so she applies a lot of debuffs she debuffs enemies so they're taking more damage and on top of this she's able to reproc her dots and just do dot damage in general so she has multiple different use cases there like i said not the best but definitely is helpful but let's go ahead and talk about these traces now obviously we already talked about the first trace which means the basic attack does have a chance to burn so this is going to be really nice here her next bonus ability is going to allow her to be advanced forward by 25 percent at the beginning of the battle so that means she's able to normally go first depending on her speed if you get like a decent amount of speed on her that means you can put her in front of cough and use a basic attack with her make cough could do a follow-up attack just so you're starting the damage off the right way with the most damage possible and hopping into the final one walking on knives this is going to be dealing 20 percent more damage to burned enemies so yeah all of these traces are pretty good but it's as far as how I would recommend leveling up the skills, I would recommend leveling up the talent first just because the talent plays just about everywhere in the kit. After that, I would probably recommend upgrading the actual ultimate attack because it reprocs all fire dots off on the enemy. And then finally, I would just upgrade the skill. I mean, you could probably change the skill for the ultimate. Me personally, running over the Black Swan, I do prefer the ultimate just because Black Swan does provide those fire dots with using ult because it counts for every single dot in the game. With all those traces out of the way, and before we hop into these relics, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button if you enjoy build guides like this, it would really help the channel out if you guys hit that subscribe button. I know I may do not summon guides in very abrasive content, but still, I, th I think I make good guides. And if you do too, then hit the subscribe button. Anyways, let's go ahead and talk about her relics now and what best relic set you can run on her and what are some different variations of relic sets. So currently what I'm running on my Gwenifen is a four-piece prisoner with a two-piece Glamas set. And that's because obviously the prisoner of the deep confinement is going to be offering a bunch of defense shred on dot teams, which just allows her to get so much more damage out on top of this black swan offers a pretty good amount of defense shred as well so this on a dot team is going to be the best thing possible for you to run and realistically glamis can be swapped out for space ceiling station if you don't have it good enough but me personally i'm rocking 144 speed and that's not even including miss ruan may so i'm way over the base amount that i need to get the 12 percent damage bonus from glamon so yeah that's what we're rocking here but there are other sets you can run with your go knife and especially if you're running on a team with like dr ratio or something like that and one of these features you can actually use to help you out would be the recommended feature funny enough two piece musket two piece lava walker a four piece lava walker that's what i would recommend if you're running on a team with dr ratio just because you're only getting one dot off on the enemy which is a fire dot uh unless you break the shield of course then you can get two dots off on the enemy which means you get a higher defense shred but i do think the two piece musket two piece lava would be better for her if you're running on a team with dr ratio or not many dots involved that would be my personal recommendation on that but but really guys i do use this recommended feature quite a lot and not for the reason of just finding sets usually the 
sets are up here, I can just click on it, it automatically filters. It just saves me extra steps from going in the actual filter and doing it myself. And there is one very, very sussy set you could run if you planned on doing it, right? And one set I actually use for taking her into pure fiction, which is a full break set. I'm talking full break set with an ERR rope, just as much energy region as she can possibly get. So with this, she's able to break all the enemy shields because they all have fire dots on them because you'll be ulting them. And on top of this, she'll be getting all that energy back to keep re proccing the fire dots off of an enemy. That actually helped out a lot. I'm sure you'll see the gameplay in the background of me doing pure fiction with my Gwenaifen somewhere in this video. Anyways, you probably want to know what stats to run your Gwenaifen, so let's briefly go over that. On the boots, I do recommend speed boots. On the body, I recommend attack percentage body. On the orb is going to be fire damage boost, and on the rope is going to be attack percentage. Of course, like I said, for pure fiction, I do recommend a full break build with the ERR rope instead. These are like the main stats you want to run. As far as those substats go, though, substats are pretty actually easy and simple, honestly. It's just going to be speed, attack percent, effect hit rate. These are the only three stats you realistically want. You can slot extra break effect in there if, you, if you're running a break build for her. If you're, she's not going to be your designated breaker, you really don't need that too, too much. But really, attack percentage, speed, and some effect hit rate in her kit would be really, really nice. But now with all of those relics out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about Miss Gwenaifen's Eidolons, Miss Eidolons. Now, I do have her E6. Well, this is nice to have E6 because you get one extra stack of fire kits, which means more damage on the enemy. Honestly, her E1 and E2 are super, super good too. She has really good low Eidolons. But her E1's super, super good because it has a 100% base chance to reduce the attack target's effect resistance, meaning you can proc more debuffs off of the enemy with having lower effect hit rate just with her skill. This is basically a plus 10 free effect hit rate into this, right? Now, hopping into her E2, this is going to be increasing the burn damage done by her basic attack or skill. So yeah, really good increased damage from burn damage here. E4 can help in Fear Fiction a lot because it does regenerate you extra energy for every burn enemy. And since there's so many enemies, this does come in clutch. But that's really all I have to say about the Eidolons here. Like I said, E1, E2 best. But let's go ahead and hop into these light cones now. What are the best light cones for? Now, personally, I think we should all know this. Good Night Sleep Well is just a super good light cone for just about any dot character in the game. And it's no exception for her. All you need is three debuffs on the enemy. And yeah, you have a lot of damage increase. So uh, yeah, I'm currently running Good Night Sleep Well on my Gwenaifen. Obviously, there are other options you can run. Eyes of Prey could help. Uh, her dot isn't really as much as everyone else's. Eyes of Prey really just helps with some effect hit rate. You can also use Solitary Healing here as well. This is something else you could run. And something else I should mention here is you could use It's Showtime. This is kind of like a mini version of Good Night Sleep Well, but a lot worse. But you could run this on her because she does have the ability to stack up two debuff just about every single turn. So she is getting a consistent 12% damage increase from S1. And if you have an S5, it's a consistent 20% damage increase just by using this on her because she's always able to get two debuffs on the enemy. Of course, if you're able to get over 80% effect hit rate, that would increase her attack percentage as well. I wouldn't recommend this option. I would only use this as a last resort. I think solitary healing would be a bit better than this one, if I'm being honest with you. But with those light cones out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about some team synergies now. What teams are she good on? Because, you know, she is a jack of all trades. Obviously, Gwenaifen is going to work great on a dot team. Yes, just run her on a dot team. You can run her with Black Swan solo or Black Swan and Kafka, or you can get even sussy and try to run her with Black Swan, Kafka, and her with like a sustained character or something that could also work i tried that out today on memory chaos and we beat the deer boss with it so that that works as well now obviously she works great with kafka alone as well but let's get out of the dot category what other thing does she work well for she works well for dr ratio because she's able to provide at least two debuffs on the enemy which helps him out a ton uh, because he's able to provide one debuff on the enemy which means you're always at three debuffs with her and dr ratio on the same team uh, of course you can equip her with other light cones that allow her to do more debuffs so she could potentially have three debuffs for you and if you have her e1 that's the ability to put three debuffs on the enemy just from her alone meaning you get really close to maxing out dr ratio's debuff maximum with her just being e1 and then of course there is just general use scenarios for Gwenaifen as well if you need like a solid fire dps or just beating something with a fire weakness then you can throw in that team as well she can act as a sub dps in those roles and provide a little bit of assistance for your team because she does play like a multi-role type thing it allows you to do more damage on the enemy overall while also allowing you to do some damage to the enemy too so yeah like i said she's a jack of all trades she's obviously a master of none that's why she is so low in the tier list she just does some things good but not everything the best right but anyways guys that's really all i have to say about our girl knife in here will you activate the sex gong and subscribe to this channel maybe not maybe you will anyways guys see you later bye